There's not a lot of autistic representation in media, and not a lot that's worth your time anyway. Media with autistic characters, whether they be side characters or main focal point of the story, always filled to the brim with one thing. Stereotypes. Writers just can't help themselves, it seems. If an autistic character isn't oblivious to their own actions in the outside world, then they're not autistic. That's not how autism should be represented. For years, I wondered to myself, why can't I relate to these autistic characters I read about and see on my screen? For a time, I didn't think I actually had autism. It seemed unrealistic to me, even with an official medical diagnosis. I simultaneously had no doubt in my mind that I was autistic, and every doubt in my mind that I was autistic. After all, if I couldn't relate to other autistic people, there was no way I could be autistic, right? Surely there was a mistake somewhere in the diagnosis, so I shouldn't be public about my autism, I thought to myself. It wasn't until I came across an RPG titled To The Moon. Before we get started, I should mention that I used some outdated terms here, but at the time I got my diagnosis and at the time To The Moon released, these were terms that were well accepted in both autism communities and medical fields alike. This is a video about my experiences, so if you're not comfortable with me using outdated terms, I implore you to leave. Great, since that's settled, let's get back to the topic at hand. To the Moon To the Moon is an RPG created by Freebird Games for desktop platforms and later on mobile devices and even the Nintendo Switch. Not your typical RPG, however. There's no battles, well, no real battles. And everything instead focused on the story of Johnny and River. You see, Johnny is an old man on his literal deathbed. They as Dr. Rosaline and Dr. Watts. And your job is to give those in their last moments of life a chance to change their entire lives and live like how they always wanted. Well, in their head at least. Use this machine to get into their head and go through the memories of the patient's life. And at the end of it all, you connect desires together to give the patient their final wish. There's a bit more to it than that, and To the Moon has a fantastic twist that flips this premise on its head. I'm not here today to talk about that twist, I'm here today to talk about one character in particular. River. I've wanted to talk about To The Moon for a while now. It's a game that's meant a lot to me. I was brainstorming topics, going over my memories of the game, other people's reactions to the game. I came up with a lot of ideas. How it helps players accept death, why memories are a precious thing, yes, even the bad ones, and the ethics of changing a dying person's life even if it's just in their head. Then I realized something. These are all topics anyone can research and talk about. There's nothing special about these. Anybody who's played To The Moon would have the exact same experience with all those and probably understands that's what the game was all about. I want to talk about how it was special to me. So I looked over the game one last time and a scene finally struck a chord with me with memories that made me realize something about myself and the way I present myself. As I've said before, I wasn't always very public about my autism. It just wasn't something I was proud of, a part of myself didn't believe I had it. That was because I couldn't relate well to the autistic characters and other autistic people on the internet. My family admittedly tried to understand autism, but their exposure to it was never a good one. Its rules, atypical, media that did nothing but portray stereotypes on autistic people. That was what they considered as research. I didn't know any better, so I consumed it myself. I didn't know they were inaccurate or anything like that. I'm sure the writers had a good heart when writing these characters, but a good heart isn't enough. Pretty clear that these people didn't have autistic people on their writing boards. They were just witnesses to autism. I can't be sure whether or not Freebird Games actually had an autistic person in their company, but I'd be surprised if they didn't. I didn't play To The Moon first. No, admittedly, I played its sequel first, Finding Paradise, a completely different game with a similar plot but different characters. After I finished that game and the credits rolled, a check mark came up after chapter 2, and I went digging around and found out it was a sequel. I immediately downloaded To The Moon and got to playing that, not knowing a single thing about it besides the plot. I wasn't aware who the characters would be, I wasn't aware what the tone of the story would be like, I wasn't really aware of anything. I was going in completely spoiler free. River doesn't appear until a bit into the game, as when you start out your journey through Johnny's mind, River is already dead and in the ground. You don't know who she is or why she died. 
As the journey continues, it becomes pretty clear. A deadly illness had overtaken River, who was doing some pretty peculiar things, constantly making paper rabbits being one of the most obvious ones. At the time, you don't know why she's making paper rabbits, and it's just something that's chopped up too. Well, it's her illness making her go crazy. That's a pretty suitable and acceptable answer. After all, what else could explain it? Right? Well, you continue your journey forward. You're in a diner of some sort, and Johnny is having a conversation with a friend of his. Eventually, they start talking about River, how she's been doing some stuff she doesn't normally do. You mention how it's normal for people with her condition, never name dropping said condition. There's more to it as well. Johnny has been looking to build a house with River, a house near a lighthouse only happens a lot to River, to the point where she's named it and considered her a friend. A bit unusual, sure. Maybe it was just the early stages of her own show. Keep going and going, eventually find yourself in a doctor's office of some sort. Johnny's requesting that the clock's ticking be stopped as it's bothering River. River insists it's fine, but Johnny persists. The receptionist agrees and turns the ticking off. Get some memory orbs and move to the office. That's where the confirmation comes in. River's got a mental condition and it was detected pretty late on in her life. Doctor recommends equestrian therapy, something you just experienced in the previous memory, and recommends a book by an author on the subject. And that's it. The memory ends. When I first played To the Moon, this scene stuck with me. I didn't know why at the time, but it did. There was something about it that made me relate to River. I didn't know it at the time, but this scene would change my life. I didn't question it though, and moved on. It wasn't until my second playthrough that I realized what this scene meant to me. Twenty twenty rolls around, and we all know how that year went. It was mixed time for me. The whole pandemic rolled right around my birthday, so I couldn't celebrate it how I wanted to. And college was starting, but everything was online, and I was going full time. It wasn't exactly a great place to be in. Stressed, confused, and unsure of what life would be like moving forward. With all that madness, though, I managed to find relaxation and escapism with a tried and tested medium of video games. I was going through my Steam library and I saw To The Moon. I figured, I'll play it again, sure, haven't touched it in years, so the story should be pretty fresh. I was enjoying it and it felt nice. Memories of when I first touched the game were coming to me. It felt like it was simpler times ago. It wasn't as fresh as I thought it'd be though. I remember almost all of what happened in the game, so nothing was really a shock. I mean, the rabbits, the big twist at the end, and everything else that a first time player should avoid looking at. I even remembered how to do some of the puzzles. So, yes, it wasn't like the first time, but I was still surprised by something. One of the biggest ones being the doctor office scene. I realized that the name was dropped here Tony Abbott. Up until now, I wasn't really questioning River's actions on much. Still related to her, but never really questioned her condition was until I put Tony's name into Google. You see, he's a specialist on Asperger's Syndrome. Which is exactly what I was diagnosed with when I received my diagnosis. Suddenly, just like that, everything clicked into place. River's habit of creating those origami rabbits over and over, her attachment to the lighthouse and the hacky sack Johnny threw over the ledge, learning to be alone even when everyone was gathering up for an event, being stuck in one memory, her attachment to things that were considered childhood, how she never grew up, and so much more. I realized that this wasn't just me relating to a character, this was me relating to an autistic character, and that wasn't full of stereotypes. She still understood love, she wasn't the best in crowded places, but she didn't break down, just left them. I realized that I connected with this character in a way I had never connected with another character. It was like my world around me had shifted, like I was waking from a dream. This was it. This was what I was looking for. Some clarity, some sign that just because I couldn't relate to all autistics, didn't mean that there would be one I could never relate to. Everything about River made sense at that moment. Everything about myself made sense at that moment. Autism wasn't just one experience, it was a spectrum. I never truly understood what that meant until that point. River wasn't like the other autistic characters. She had some stereotypes, sure, but it wasn't all stereotypes. 
Her whole character wasn't built around being oblivious to the world and the things she said and did. She was on the same end of the spectrum as me, I had realized. I'd never seen that before. It was hard to find autistic people offline, and it was hard to talk to autistic people online. But I didn't need to talk to this character, this person, to understand them. They inadvertently told me their life story and how their autism affected their life. First time I played To the Moon, I didn't exactly know what River's condition was. I never bothered looking it up, but I'm almost certain that somewhere along the line, I did find out before my second playthrough just forgot about it. And yet, it still affected me. It changed my life. I was more open about my autism with other people. I was more accepting of it. I still didn't understand it much, but that didn't matter to me. It was just a part of me. I had to accept that. But Rivers helped me understand it. To be proud of it, even. Autism wasn't something that was just there to hold you back on life goals. It was an obstacle, sure but not one that was impossible to overcome. It could even help you see the world in a different light than neurotypicals. It's easier to connect with people like you, to understand each other better, to know who you are. And I would have never known that had I not played to the moon that second time around. We're far from a time where autistic characters won't be filled with stereotypes in the mainstream. Maybe that's just something we have to accept. But there's still those hidden gems out there like To The Moon, you can actually connect with the characters and understand their struggles. While other people might not be able to connect with River like I can, that's fine. Everybody on the spectrum is different and we won't all have the same experiences. We might have some similar experiences, but how we deal with those and how they affect our lives are different for each of us. We can choose to see our autism as a thing to put us down, we can choose to see it as a tool for understanding the world. You ask any neurotypical what autism is, and they either tell you that they don't understand it themselves, or that they're an expert because they have an autistic child. It doesn't really matter how much research they do, I hate to say it, but holistics, that's the term for people without autism by the way, will never truly understand autism like they might wish they could. It just isn't possible. They might be able to relate to experiences we have, or listen to us talk about our autism, but that makes them far from an expert on it. Only we know what it's like and how it truly affects us, and I realized that with River and Johnny's relationship. Remember that clock I brought up before and how River insisted it was fine? Or maybe you've played the game and you remember when Johnny met River in the school, or the movie date, or when they first met under the stars. Johnny didn't fully understand her autism then, and even when she was on her deathbed, Johnny still didn't understand her autism and thought he had figured it out. It's part of the autistic experience, it seems. Holistics and neurotypicals assuming they know everything about your autism just because they're close to you. Johnny is not a bad person, I'm not saying that. He just didn't understand her autism. I understood that as an autistic person. Now, autism has its own flaws, sure, but I think it's something to be proud of. I could get into a whole rant about how autism could be much more manageable if society just accepted it. But I don't want to talk politics here. I want to end this on a high note. You're a nerd typical. I hope you've realized something about the autistic experience here. If you're autistic like me, I hope you can relate to what I've talked about today. If you can't, that's fine. I just hope you're proud of who you are and that you realize that just because you're not like other autistic people doesn't mean you're not autistic. We're all unique in our own way. Some people will capture that perfectly, some won't. It's just the way things go. If you haven't played To The Moon yet, Go we'll play it. Play it to the credits. It's an experience like no other, and you'll be a different person walking out of it whether you like it or not. I'm not sure I'll ever find an experience like To the Moon again. I'd be very happy to, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. But autistic representation will always likely be behind these hidden gems. I think that's where they're best suited. No big writing team to hold you back, no need to be consumer friendly and create a character that's filled with stereotypes. Just create the characters you want. Create characters and stories that people can understand and connect with, like no big company will ever be able to do. In a way, this is a love letter to indie games. But it's mostly a love letter towards Freebird Games for making to the moon. I truly don't know where I'd be without it, but I'm glad I found it when I did. 
Who knows? One day we could have autistic characters in mainstream media from all across the spectrum. But until that day comes, I'll stick with To the Moon and with Fritter. And with that, I thank you for sticking with me. It might not be the longest essay you've seen, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It means a lot you've come this far. I bid you a farewell and I hope to see you again soon. Maybe on the moon. Who knows? <laughs>